Hi, today we're going to be talking about a programme that was first filmed back in about 2004. Um, it's part of series 12, episode 13, and it was filmed near the village of Hanslop on the Northamptonshire, Buckinghamshire border. And I'm joined by geophysics genius, John Gator. Hey, John, how are you doing? Too bad. <laughs> No, you're a bit grumpy about this geophysics, aren't you? Maybe you can explain why. Yeah, it, it wasn't the easiest of sites from our point of view. I, I mean, the first issue is, if I can point to it, that this is the grayscale magnetic behind me. And you can see these black and white lines sort of parallel to each other, a chevron sort of pattern. Yeah. Well, those are land drains. And the land drains have basically masked a lot of the responses. The second difficulty is in the middle of the land drains where you've got the white rectangle, um, then that's the area that's already been excavated and is still being excavated during the programme. Ah. So we couldn't do any geophysics there at all. So we didn't really add a lot to the programme. <laughs> To be honest, we added nothing except for a nice pattern of land drains. <laughs> well, actually, I mean, it's actually quite nice geophysics, isn't it? It's just not old. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, if there's anybody out there that wants us to go and map land drains, we, we can do that as well as the archaeology. And here we did it far better. <laughs> um, what you've got are the fired clay pipes set in trench is probably on magnetic gravels and so they show really strongly and it's a clear pattern. The problem with the excavated area is we couldn't really go and do any survey work because there were spoil heaps there so they were causing disturbance, we couldn't walk over the spoil heaps. Then there's the trenches themselves where you've got excavated features. We normally detect the fills of a feature so if they've already been excavated, we're not going to add to the story. You'd got an exposed building in this area, which was, you know, pretty exciting. We all wanted to know what it was. We couldn't find any other stone buildings beyond it. Um, and oh, it's just not a good idea to survey excavated areas. There's too many complications. And, you know, we're better working away from the excavations and getting the wider picture. Could you go into a bit more detail why it's difficult to do that? Yeah, it's because on a site, you'll you'll have lots of modern things, oh, buckets, survey pegs, nails, um, barrows, everything like that. And the responses you get from those modern materials are far, far stronger than the responses you get from archaeological features. In the same way that the, the drainage channels uh, swamp the area, then any modern features would give responses that would mask the archaeology. And so that's why it, it's not worth us going in. Was, was there any geophysics that you were um, happy with, with this excavation? Well, I was happy with the drains, I mean, they're pretty spectacular. <laughs> but um, archaeologically speaking, well, the first area where the main excavation was, was within an enclosure. There was a second enclosure showing on aerial photographs. Uh, and that's behind me. If I can get my pointing right, I can't. This is all back to front. <laughs> yeah, this is behind me here. And yep. you can just see the curving arc that is the ditch for that enclosure. There's also a line of black and white uh, anomalies going across that enclosure, and that, that's a, a drain. There's a big piece of metal at one point that's oh. got a black blob and a circle around it. But the archaeological ditch is not showing very strongly. There's one or two features inside that suggested burning. Mm -hmm. But the impression we got is there wasn't a lot there. Um, whether we're all right, though, is a different matter. It wasn't the easiest of sites for geophysics. 
No, um, and I can see why, actually, you know, and I think people will be able to see that. You know, it's quite clear that you can see that big rectangle there where the excavation is. And those field drones, like you say, are um, pretty amazing geophysics, but just not archaeological. <laughs> Come on, move on. <laughs> um, I think um, this is quite an interesting one, Mark, and, and I think it's worth watching um, the process, really, of, of people um, trying to figure out what's going on with these structures, uh, what kind of use they were actually for. Are they houses? Are they cow sheds? What are they? Um, and almost it kind of changes every hour or so is more uh, is revealed. So it's interesting to watch how the archaeological process there, I think. All I, I was going to say is that we talked about two enclosures showing on the aerial photographs. And I'm sure there's the scene where Stuart says, if you look at the wider landscape, there's a series of these enclosures they're typical of Bronze Age landscape, Bronze Age enclosures. Shall we see if he was right? <laughs> Just any excuse for you to get a pop at Stuart, isn't it? <laughs> Not at all. Um, also, this is a uh, quite funny one because um, this is, I don't know if you remember, Phil's first time on a horse. <laughs> I, I've, I've blanked my memory, to be honest. <laughs> it, 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 it is very interesting, actually, and it's quite an interesting cameo as well, because um, Phil's investigating um, how um, horse bits were made, and they have a blacksmith on making a replica of a medieval horse bit, so that, that's quite interesting as well. Were you around when uh, Paul Blinkhorn was weighing all the pottery? Yeah. That, that was actually pretty interesting. I've not really seen anybody do that on site before. Yeah, I think it's really interesting how by weighing the pottery, he was able to look at the distribution um, and look at almost like the hot spots of where it was. And um, there's a lovely um, illustration that Victor did, actually, of because Paul's talking about middens and spoil heaps and, you know, chucking your rubbish out and whatnot. And, and I think it's worth looking out for Victor's illustration of that because it's a, it really brings it to life. You, you talk about the pottery. That's one thing we don't really detect in our surveys unless it's a complete pot in situ and that's been burned. I, I was surprised in that second enclosure where we, we didn't get particularly strong responses. There was a fair amount that came from there mm. and it, it makes you realise that Dare I say it, geophysics doesn't see everything. Cut. I don't think <laughs> I should say that too much. <laughs> well, I think this is why it's important to employ a range of techniques, isn't it? You know, so, you know, geophysics is always fantastic, but it's always great to look at the landscape as well. It's good to look at the fine distribution um, and obviously the fills and the contexts and whatnot that you get from the trenches. It all kind of it's about bringing all that information together, isn't it? It's a good chance for people to see Mick a bit grumpy on this one. <laughs> and um, I think I, it's quite interesting to, it, it, there's a look of surprise on his face, actually, um, fairly later on when one of the suggestions of what it might be comes up, actually. So I think that's that's quite a, an amusing bit to look out for, too. Brilliant. John, thanks for uh, catching up with us. Um, really appreciate it and look forward to speaking to you soon. Choose a better bloody site next time. <laughs> okay, cheers, Danny. Bye. Don't call me. <laughs> Can you do that again with more enthusiasm? <laughs> <laughs> cheers, John. Okay, take care. Be good. See you again. I'm at the very start of a fugu, and it might be that there's more of these tunnels and caverns existing on this site. We're going to be here in September, so please join us then and back us on Patreon so we can do more and more work on these wonderful sites. <laughs>